Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to TVFE. Uh, Dan died of COVID, so I have to carry this on myself. Uh, <laughs> no, he's fine. He's just got COVID, but he didn't want to cough in your ears, so I'm taking over. Um, I am the main host today. Like, it's back in the early days when I first started this podcast. Uh, in this week's episode, we will be talking about Take Two buying Zynga, uh, cops and Pokemon, not robbers. Uh, and a man with a pig heart. Uh, on, so yeah, uh, we'll jump into rapid reviews because we got the Book of Be Boba Fett episode free. Um, I enjoyed it. It wasn't the best episode. It's kind of a bit boring. I didn't like most of the nostalgia stuff that they tried to pour force into it. Uh, I saw a lot of people are very angry about the Vespers. Um, I didn't like them, but I didn't hate the characters that were riding them. I think they're all kind of like iffy but i don't know i'm sure they'll grow on people i just i don't know what the direction of this show is so yeah that's rapid reviews it was mixed <laughs> uh let's go on to stream that movie news into my head uh we got two trailers that we're gonna jump into they're peacock's uh original series bel-air which is the dramatic retelling of the fresh prince of bel-air uh and it's um I don't know. I feel very mixed on this because I I watched the original Fresh Prince of Bel Air when I was a kid, um, and this like you got you don't go from a comedy to a dramatic retelling, and it just doesn't look it doesn't feel right. I don't know why. There's just like all the characters are different. They don't have the charm or the charisma of the other actors from the original show. But it is being backed by Will Smith, so I don't know how much uh like how much um say he's had in this if this was his idea or if all he did was okay it and then has not touched it with a five foot pole yeah it says it says it's executive produced by will smith um but yeah it, it basically is a new dramatic take on will's complicated journey from the streets of west philadelphia to the gated mansions of bel-air as these two worlds collide will reckons with the power of a second chances while navigating the conflicts emotions and by it blasts biases of the world far different from the what the only one he ever knew um yeah it, it seems that they've taken like the lightheartedness and just made it a lot more <laughs> serious which i don't know if i like that um but yeah we'll have to see because it apparently comes out on the 13th of february but we don't get peacock here in the uk so whether or not i'll ever watch it i'm still unable to watch peacemaker uh <laughs> so i've heard that it's great and I can't watch it because it's not out in the UK anywhere. So thanks, James Gunn. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, uh, we'll jump into the next trailer, which is Kimmy, which is a HBO Max exclusive movie. Again, probably won't be able to watch this unless it comes into cinemas in the UK uh, or I pirate it, which I have been thinking of doing for Peacemaker. But apparently James Gunn said that there would be an option for the UK soon. So I might be able to watch it. I'm not sure. Uh, but Kimmy is basically a, uh, so the title, the film's title refers to a fictitious Alexa Siri-like voice activated digital assistant called Kimmy. It hears everything you say all the time, recording everything for a big brother-like corporation. Uh, so Zoe Kravitz plays a, uh, Angela Childs, a voice stream interpreter who overhears a murder on a recording she was analyzing. Uh, Angela is shaken after the reaching out to her colleagues. Why are her employers resisting, resistant to her trying to bring this into the authorities' attention? So it's kind of like a psychological uh, thriller. Uh, it's directed by um, uh, Steven Soderbergh. Um, and yeah, it looks pretty good. It just kind of like echoes the paranoia and the fear that your robots are listening to you all the time. And uh, like, I'm pretty sure there have been stories of like abuse victims having like alexa's like reach out to the cops and stuff like that um or like it being recorded but no one doing anything with it so i would i would generally think i might enjoy this one um it looks kind of pretty as well it's just like a just a it's steven soderbergh so he's kind of like a stylized director and he knows what he's doing um but yeah uh in a quote he says soderbergh believes you should be scared of the likes of amazon and alexa basically it's like, what power do these companies have on you? <laughs> and what dirt do they have? And we've just let them into our homes. I have, sadly, I have an Alexa and a Google, and they can probably hear everything I'm saying right now. 
and they're probably directing it right to their head databases and they're probably listening to this podcast a lot easier <laughs> than you are. Um, with all the stuff that's not been edited out. <laughs> not like I edit anyway. Uh, so moving on to the, to just random uh, uh, random streaming news and stuff like that. Uh, uh, Netflix is looking to reunite with Dwayne Johnson, Gal Gadot, and Ryan Reynolds for a Red Notice 2, which, honestly, I didn't hate that movie, and a lot of people did. And apparently it's Netflix's biggest uh, thing ever, and that's not surprising because it's got the three biggest, like, three of the biggest names in Hollywood at the moment. Uh, And it was just a fun, dumb, goofy movie. And if they can do more heist, like random heist bullshit, I'm I'm down for it. It's kind of like Extraction. It's like doesn't necessarily need a sequel, but I'm kind of interested to see what they do with a sequel. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically all I have to say on that. Uh, and then Black Panther Two is uh finally going to start filming again after months of delays because of Lita Wright's um injury on set uh because that movie is meant to be coming out at the end of the year in like november and they're not finished filming it yet uh because a lot of a lot of people are speculating this because she's uh anti-vax um which if true then yeah disney has all the right if they want to not like they gotta keep her sadly like I'm not a hundred percent set on uh shuri taking over the role of the black panther which i think's the basic plot line of this movie. I think they're also introducing Namor and Atlantis into this, kind of like how they introduced Black Panther and uh, Wakanda through Civil War. They're probably just going to have it like tied in, like he's just going to turn up and then they'll probably give Namor his own movie or something like that. Also, apparently Namor's a dick in the comics, so it'd be quite interesting to see because he's like one of the good guys, but he's just a gigantic asshole. So I kind of look forward to seeing... Whoever playing him is just a giant douchebag. Um, and yeah, uh, this kind of ties into both TV and gaming news. So this is going to be our segue. Uh, Twitch has clamped down on TV show streams, uh, basically banning Pokemon and uh, Disguised Toast for doing it. And I think a couple other streamers for doing it. It's basically just people watching TV shows and stuff like that. And then that they're basically in copywriting of infringements and people are mixed on what they feel like it is because it's like us intellectual like people are are like on this twitch streamer side and people are against the twitch streamers it's all just over the place i kind of don't see the point of watching a tv show with um a twitch streamer i would rather not watch something with someone uh just pausing it constantly and talking over or like talking over it despite the fact that we have done a commentary for uh alita battle angel uh and you should go listen to that because i think that makes that movie better because we just slashed that movie um but that that's that's the kind of thing i'd be like it's like just watching someone watch a tv show unless they're like hating on it or like deeply invested in it just watching someone watch something isn't that entertaining um so I don't know. I I feel like it's kind of like uh a bit a bit weird. Also, I guess it's kind of breaks like the rules because if you're streaming, say for example, a Twitch streamer were to stream uh Peacemaker and they didn't region lock it, so something that is locked to a certain amount of countries because that's how, and then people in the UK can watch that streamer watch it. So that would be like the way I could watch it if someone streamed Peacemaker, um. And then, yeah, it's just, it breaks loads of legal rules because you're not meant to technically have stuff go outside of countries and all of that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I get why they did it. But the, the the big thing that I found is that uh, when Twitch bans someone, it basically gives the Twitch streamer a break where they can, they get a load of media attention and everyone's eyes are on them because they did something. And then when they come back, they get m- massive amounts of views again. And they just get like, because the- everyone has, um, Twitch streamers always have like, they complain that they can't leave their job because otherwise they they lose Twitch subscribers and stuff like that. Because if you just leave, people just go and move on to another Twitch streamer unless they're super loyal. But you'll, it would take a while to get those people back who have left. Um, So this kind of just gets you, because you're not like constantly just in the news cycle or, or constantly streaming. So this both 
gives them a break because they don't have to stream. Uh, and then when they do come back, because they're in the constant news cycle, a lot of new people who might not have necessarily watched them come back and watch them out of support or disgust. Either way, it's good publicity regardless. So it's just kind of like, hey, look, do that. Um, but let's move on to gaming news. Uh, we'll start with Fortnite is returning to iOS, but not in the way you think. So basically, iOS uh, and Apple banned Fortnite because of the ongoing Epic versus Apple lawsuit, uh, which, if people don't know, was basically Fortnite added in per- in-game purchasing for V-Bucks, and that broke Apple's terms of service because in order to be on the iOS store and the Android store, you need to pay uh, f- for V-Bucks through Apple and the iOS store or the Android store. And so in-game purchasing basically gave them no money for Apple or uh, Google. And they don't like that because they take 30% of all purchases uh, on their app store. And so basically Epic and Apple went to court. Uh, Epic basically won the fact that, yes, they can have in-game purchases and Apple can't do anything about it. But Apple still maintains the rights uh, right to refuse Epic's return on uh the iOS store. Uh, so what is now happening is GeForce Now, which is NVIDIA's uh, like game streaming service, is having a Fortnite closed beta, which means that if, if you do want to play on an iOS device, you can technically play Fortnite through NVIDIA GeForce Now. So yeah, just kind of a funny little backhanded thing that Epic's done to try and work their way around being banned from a uh, the iOS store. It's just funny watching these corporations just basically work around the legal system because there's nothing Apple, I think, can do about this because it's not like they're breaking Apple's terms of service because they're not. It would be like every other game on NVIDIA GeForce Now breaking Apple's in-purchase thing because I also think Microsoft might uh, have their xCloud banned, but they worked around it by doing a browser-based extension so you can play on iOS and do all of the things on there. Uh, it's just funny. Uh, moving on. Uh, Dying Light 2 has been in the news because it will apparently take 500 hours to fully complete the game, uh, says Techland, the developer. Uh, campaign, social, and all of that stuff. Uh, it's about, I think, a 50-hour campaign, but if you want to do everything in the game, it's uh, about 500 hours. And people are losing their mind over the fact that... <laughs> This seems an excessive amount, um, uh, and it's just like people are going, why do we need to play it for this long? People are also going, yes, this is perfect, I really want this. Um, people are mixed, but I mean, you don't have to do everything in a game. It's just like, but yeah, it's about 20 hours uh, to complete the main story, 80 hours to finish the main story and all of the story quests, and about 500 hours to do everything in the game, basically. Uh, they've also said that they're going to do a five-year uh, roadmap for like DLCs, expansions, all of that. And I think they're all going to be free as well because uh, Dying Light Two, uh, Dying Light One, all of their DLCs were free. I d- I can't confirm that. I haven't. I don't have that in front of me. I just think I remember seeing that when I was looking up all of this news. Um, I just didn't remember to put it in the uh, like notes section that we use. Um, but yeah, I think that's good. I mean, I like Dying Light 1. I never finished it. I never got around to it. I just like running around smashing zombies' heads in. Um, I, w- I, di- I did think that the game got a little long uh, in places. Um, and I don't know if I fully enjoyed the parkour aspect, but mainly because I was bad and I think the controls... I think I could have remapped them. I can't remember if they were remappable. But if they weren't remappable, I just don't think the placements of the buttons was very good for what I wanted uh, of the um, controls. But I did enjoy the game. I had fun when I was doing multiplayer with everyone and we were just running around and all my friends had super powerful weapons that they just gave me for free and I didn't have to earn any of them. (laughs) That was just fun. Um, And yeah, then we can move on to uh, the fact that take two is buying zynga um which is the mobile developer in a 12 billion dollar acquisition so it's it could be based this is them trying to they're basically trying to buy uh zynga for 12.7 billion dollars uh and this would 
potentially be the biggest game company acquisition in history. We already had Microsoft's buyout of Bethesda, which was seven billion, I think, from the top of my head, or eight billion. I can't remember if it was like seven point nine billion. Uh, but yeah, this is the develop. This is the parent company who owns the likes of Rockstar and Two K, uh, and has a net. Yeah, and it's um basically. I think what they're gonna do with it is Take Two is gonna start trying to port like old Rockstar games and old like other games onto mobile, which is apparently what the rumor is that they're gonna do. Um. So yeah, uh, in terms of the agreement, sees Zynga stockholders received three point uh three pound three dollar fifty in cash and six point three six worth of Take Two common stock, making each Zynga share value at nine uh, nine dollar sixty eight. This marks a premium of sixty four percent on Zynga's closing share price on January seventh, twenty twenty two. Um. Yeah, so it's rather than a cash buyout, Take-Two facilitated the deal by purchasing Zynga's shares using a combination of cash and Take-Two's own stock. Um, But yeah, it's just crazy how much people are spending on video game developers. Uh, So yeah, uh, take 10 cents billion, uh, 8.6 billion purchase of Supercell and Microsoft's 8.1 billion acquisition of ZeniMax Media and Bethesda. So yeah, it's, it's... gonna be the largest gay uh acquisition in gaming history uh and yeah so the, it's just they the zinger is basically the people who made farmville uh and some other stuff uh but yeah it's a crazy crazy amount of money and who knows what will come out of this maybe gta 5 will be ported to mobile <laughs> It would be crazy. Uh, let's go on to a little bit of a weirder story. Um, Lego has been in the news because they had an Overwatch uh, s- bunch of Overwatch collect like collection of stuff that they were making, and they have decided to delay it um, because of all the uh, stuff going on with acquisition, Aqu- uh, Activision, and um, Blizzard. Uh, so it was set to release in February on February 1st, which was one of the more anticipate, uh, anticipated sets so far this year. But has been, there has been a lot of feedback in the common community regarding the allegations in the workplace at Activision Blizzard and why the set is still to be released. Lego will share an update on their plans on the partnership when they reach decisions on if and how Activision addresses their employees' concerns. So basically, Activision is fucked up that even Lego has to go, oh no. We can't be associated with you anymore. Um, and that's just mad. The Activision has fucked up so badly that they have now delayed toy sales and even Lego <laughs> has to go, ooh, okay, we're not gonna, we're gonna hold these back. Which probably means the demand for these will be even higher because that's just how people work. As soon as something gets put behind a blockade, People demand it even more because it's scarcity. And if if someone does manage to like steal one of these and put it on the market, it will probably sell for quite a big price, which is just like it's Lego and Lego is already expensive. So having it become even more expensive is crazy. Um, but yeah, let's jump into some more Activision uh, ramifications of their shitty behavior. Uh, Xbox has changed how they do things with Activision following misconduct reports. So Microsoft has basically come in and said, "Hey, look, your shitty practices. We're gonna, we're gonna kind of cautiously uh, work on how our relationship is and stuff like that." Uh, and it's like, yeah, it's just kind of like, "Hey, look, we're gonna, we're gonna let, we're gonna take some time. We're gonna not the the work we do specifically with a partner like Activision is something that obviously I'm not gonna talk about publicly." Spencer said. We have changed how we do certain things with them, and they are aware of that. But this isn't about, for us as Xbox, virtue shaming other companies. Xbox history is not spotless. They're just basically, it's kind of just like, we don't know what their current ramifications for this is, but it's probably that maybe Activision takes less of a cut in the sales on Xbox. Um it could be that Activision gets less of a priority against other games because Activision can spend money with Xbox and Xbox will push it to the front page of their stores, uh, stuff like that. It might just be that Activision now hasn't got as much 
power over Xbox in terms of like, we've got these big games, you want to push them, and we'll take as much percentage as we can. I think it's just like, hey, look, we're, and that's just me speculating. I don't, I don't know what the, no one knows what the like the deal is. It's just Phil Spencer's come out and said, look, we're we're working with our relationship with Activision. If Activision chains, we'll be more than willing to do what we were already doing. But it's just, it's just that Activision now has to deal with big companies. I think, I imagine PlayStation will do something similar. I think Nintendo is also potentially going to be doing something similar. But it's just their relationships will be more like cautious. I imagine where. Activision probably just won't be getting as much money out of the sales on their systems. Um, in more Xbox news, Microsoft has discontinued the Xbox One series line of um, products. They are no longer being produced. Um, but yeah, I mean, this happens all the time. Uh, people get very mad about it. But honestly, it's kind of like Microsoft's work needs those, basically the... They don't need the facilities to be working on the old Xbox. They've already sold what they're going to sell. They got a new console generation out. There isn't as much demand for the old generation as there is for the new generation. They're just taking up space on the production line. They could then reuse those resources to make more Xbox um, Series Xs. God, Microsoft's naming convention is the worst one in history. Because <laughs> it's Xbox One, Xbox One X, Xbox One S. Xbox Series S, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series V. Very confusing naming system. Um, but yeah, they've basically just gone. Look, we had a good run. We're gonna we're gonna stop manufacturing them. And look, we're gonna probably take all of those resources and just push it into making more. Uh, yeah. Also, PlayStation is probably gonna end the production of the PS4 uh, PS4 at the end of 2021 in earlier reports seen by other news outlets. Um, but I think PlayStation kind of went, okay, maybe we won't do it as early as we thought because the PS5 shortages, we're just going to basically, we've got the tech for the last generation consoles, so we'll keep making the last generation consoles until we have more for the next gen and we'll keep pumping out PS4s because the PS4 is our best, nearly one of our best selling consoles of all time. And why would we not keep making it if people can't get their hands on the PS5? We might as well give them a PS4 Pro or a PS4 uh, that they can use whilst they wait. Microsoft's like, well, we don't we don't have that demand for either of our consoles. Um, in more Microsoft news, they want uh, console makers to work together on cross-platform bans and user blocking. So this would be that if someone gets banned on Xbox, Xbox and my, uh, PlayStation would work together to maybe IP block that person or have a database of the person's like IP and that PlayStation could then use that to block that person in the game if they switch to consoles or like a Nintendo device or even maybe working with Steam. I think it's just because... It would be like for cheaters, people who are known to cheat on platforms and then move to other platforms when they get banned, would probably like for other games. Uh, it might also be just just like things like that. It would just be useful things to stop people continuously cheating. It's like, hey, look, we don't like cheaters. Stop trying to cheat. We're going to ban you across all platforms and we're going to put you in a database. database. We're going to block your IP. We're going to block your username. We're going to just try as much as we can to stop you from being able to play the game. If you continue to abuse people online, you continue to cheat, you continue to just be a horrible person, <laughs> just like sort of things. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, because they were basically, uh, Xbox was asked whether or not they had any, uh, to what, what their Xbox clear of toxic content protocol was. And Spencer made the point that Xbox is not a free speech platform. We're a platform around interactive entertainment and video games, and we're not there to allow all kinds of social discourse to happen on our platform. That's not why we exist. They're basically going, if you're racist, you're sexist, you're a horrible person, we don't want you on our platform. We don't have any reason to keep you. We can ban you. We don't have, it's just, you, we don't want you. Just stop. If you want to play on Xbox, be a good person. And it's just like, uh, yeah. I mean, it's good. I mean, but yeah, it's, it's basically, 
He says, uh, we don't get paid on Xbox by how many times you click on something, Spencer concluded. I get paid on how many times your kids like playing Minecraft. And I do think that transparency in gaming space means that we have to be very, very consistent with our customers uh, because we almost ha more have a subscription relationship with our customers that if you logged into a Minecraft tomorrow and had a bad experience, you might never come back, which is kind of like what I have with COD. It's like bad experience, never want to go back to COD bad experience with Fortnite, don't want to go back. Stuff like that. It's just people's... If people don't want to play a game because they had a bad experience on it, people won't go back to the game or won't come back for a very long time. And a business model for, like, Fortnite and Microsoft and Xbox and all of that and uh, Call of Duty and all of these things are just to get people to continuously play. And so them having people leave because it's just not fun to play anymore, is just bad for business. So, yeah, it's in their best interest to try and just get rid of all the bad, badness. And that's been gaming. Um, in weird, wacky, wonderful, weird, wacky, wonderful world news, uh, tearless onions to be sold in British supermarkets for the first time, uh, which is just funny. <laughs> After 35 years of watering your, uh, watery, watering years of development, scientists produce sunions, a less pungent variety of onion. Uh, hang on, I gotta get rid of ad blocker, uh, which that will be sold in British supermarkets. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just like, hey, look, we managed to uh, create uh, onions that don't cry, <laughs> don't make you cry, which I've never had the issue of. I don't cry when I cut onions, so maybe my eyes are just uh, better. <laughs> but I have had a weird eye thing the last couple of days where it's just been stinging. Uh, let me just Google why do onions make you cry, and then we'll find out why do onions make you cry. Onions produce the chemical irritant known as sinopropanephenol S oxide. It stimulates the eye's lacrimal glands, so they release tears. Scientists used to blame the enzyme analysis for the instability of substances cut in a cut onion. The unstable sulfate acid rearranges itself into the word that I can't pronounce very well. Um, and yeah, so it's basically onions produce something that make your eyes water. Uh, and it's just, they've probably just taken that out of the thing. I can't read the article because it's one of those ones where you have to buy it. And I didn't realize that when I clicked on it. But hey, we are getting tearless onions. So if I ever see one in a British supermarket, I will laugh because I never cried when onions <laughs> were cut in my household anyway. Uh, moving on to the Batman. Now, what does everyone want in a movie release tie-in product for a Batman-related thing? They want Oreo, limited edition Oreos with the Batman on. Uh, these are going to be sold in America, and they're just Oreos with Batman's face on, and him in the cow. And it's just like, cool, I'd love that. <laughs> they're pretty cool. I'm just like... I would want that. It's a 30, There's a 37 second ad and it's just Oreos depicting Batman. It's just like his car. It's just a tie in for the new um, Batman movie, uh, which has been uh, rated PG-13. And people are upset about that because they were expecting an R rated Batman. And it's like, no, because Batman is never going to be R rated. It will be dark, but it will It will be like Christopher Nolan's. It will just be PG-13 because then they can get kids in the cinemas. Um, but yeah, I just found that funny. I just love a weird tie-in product for a movie. Um, and it's the shame that they're not going to be released in the UK. They might be at some stage. They might, they might ramp up production, but America gets a load of different varieties of Oreo that we don't get in the UK. And that just saddens me. I'm like, come on. I'd love all of these. It's like, um, uh, like, uh, Eastern countries have like different varieties of Kit Kats and like they have tea Kit Kats and all of that. I'm just like, oh, God damn it! that's so cool. I don't like tea, but there's some varieties that I'd actually like to try. Um, and you have to go on Amazon and buy them off there, but then there's like they're like 40 quid because it's all the shipping and everything, and you're just like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'd just rather buy them in a UK store, but I can't. Or when I go on holiday over to that country, I'll buy it there, and then I'll try it, and then I'll probably hate it, and I'll never want it again. Uh, moving on... <laughs> Uh, speaking of the Batman to his arch rivals, the LAPD officers who got fired for chasing Snorlax in Pokemon Go instead of a robber. Uh, this just amused me. It's just like, okay, 
This reminds me of like the early days of um, Pokemon Go. And this was um, in 2017. So like early, early days of Pokemon Go when it, the craziness of it was just about dying down. Because it was like the summer of 2016 was all Pokemon crazy. And then it was still around in 2017. And then it's only really diehard people who play it now. Um, but yeah, uh, a detailed in court documents, former LAPD officer Louise Lozano and Eric Mitchell were on foot beat patrol on April 15, 2017, when a robber at, a, at the Macy's at Crenshaw Mall was taking place. Calls began going out to the police in the vicinity to respond to respond and some, like a unit that was at a homicide crime scene, rushed over to the mall. Lozano and Mitchell, on the other hand, ignored the call at first and then responded with a simple no when asked again. As it turns out, they were willfully failed to respond to the robbery call and attempted to conceal the fact by saying that they were somewhere other than where they actually were. After listening to the recording in Lozano and Mitchell's police car, the LAPD discovered uh, they were playing Pokemon Day on the day of the robbery. The recording showed that at approximately 6.09 p.m., just five minutes after Officer Lanz Lazon Lazano said screw it to checking in with communication about the robbery call, Officer Mitchell alerted Lazano that Snorlax just popped up at the 46th and Lament Lamert. The court documents read after noting that Lamert doesn't go all the way to 46, Lazano responded, oh, you know what I can do? I'll go down to 11th and swing up on Kershaw. I know that way I can get to it. Mitchell suggested a different route, then told Lozano, we got four minutes. For approximately the next 20 minutes, the DICVS captured petitioners discussing Pokemon as they drove to different locations where the virtual creatures apparently appeared on their mobile phones. Um, but yeah, it's just funny that the cops took so much, like they, they could have stopped a robbery, but they decided to get a Snorlax. Um, just crazy. I remember the first time I caught Snorlax in Pokemon Go. I was, I had an equally as like irritating experience trying to get one, um, because the at the time of when the game launched, they didn't have a decent like location tracker thing, and the little map at the bottom just said, "Hey, look, there is something around you, but we have no way of telling you where it is," um, and so you were using like cheat geo location maps uh, that were using the old Ingress. Uh, location spawners that they had um to find where the pokemon were so i was walking around but this was before i was doing that um because i'm a sad cunt <laughs> um and so it was just oh shit snorlax has popped up on my map and i was walking home with my friend and my friend was um like we were standing outside his house and i just walked off um from his house after meeting up and it was like 2 a.m in the morning because <laughs> we just come we'd just gone out um and I was walking back home and it popped up on the little thing. So I was just running around at 2 a.m. trying to find it. And I ran back to his and I'd rung him up and said, can you have a look around where you are? And he or I like I can't remember if I rang him or text messaged him. Uh, and he, he was running around like going because the little footprint thing that they had, which would get uh, shorter or wider, like more feet or less feet, depending on how close you were to them. And so he was running off in one direction. I was running off uh, towards where he was to try and catch up to him because he was saying, oh, it was it was getting uh, closer on his thing. Um, and then I ran back to where he was uh, originally and then it popped up on my thing. I messaged him, come back, and then I caught it. And by the time he got there, it despawned because we'd spent so much time trying to find it. Uh, but yeah, that, that was just a funny thing. I also managed to catch a Lapras because the game glitched out uh when we were in a gym like an actual gym not a pokemon gym and it glitched out and it skyrocketed me across like the town i live in <laughs> and it just went oh here's a lapras and it popped up and i caught it and my mate was like well, how the fuck did you get that and it was just like i don't know <laughs> and then we tried searching around the area uh where i thought it was up but again i think it despawned so i owed my mate a lapras and a snorlax so if i ever got a second one i owed him those and I still haven't paid him because we stopped playing the game. So it was better for me. Uh, and then lastly in news, uh, the supermarket Morrison has decided to scrap 
uh, sell by dates are uh, the use by date on milk in favor of the sniff test. So if you want to buy milk at Morrison's, it won't have a use by date. You'll just have to kind of smell your milk to see if it has gone off. And honestly, that method doesn't work for me because I accidentally uh, a couple of days ago had milk and it was like the 5th of January and it was like the 14th of January. And I was just like, eh, it doesn't smell too bad. And I poured it in my uh, cereal and it was all lump. There was like, it had the little, uh, little lumps that were starting to form to make like, that would eventually make big lumps, but it was just kind of like the, forming the little lumps. And I was just like, oh, gross. Okay. I got to stop drinking this because I'm just like, this is, mm, this isn't working. Um, but yeah, uh, that's, that's all there is. It's just like, okay, cool. I think it's to stop waste. I think it's just people throwing their milk away before it's actually gone bad because it's, it says so, use by, um, and milk kind of lasts a couple days after the use by date. It's just a rough estimate on when you want it. And I think it's just them trying to cut down on waste. But I think this is just going to cause more waste because I think people are just going to go leave their milk in their fridge and then forget when they need to use it and then if it's gone bad because they haven't got a use by date they aren't going to use it so they're just going to have like milk in their fridge and then it's going to go bad because they're like oh it doesn't have a sell by date that must mean it's good and then it's going to go bad and they're going to throw it away so i don't know how this fixes anything um let's move into tech time and science shenanigans uh nasa solar probe touches the sun for the first time uh so yeah, uh, the reported on the seminal star touch, which NASA refers to as a giant leap for solar science, uh, the design taxi uh, just landed an astron- uh just as landing astronauts and rovers on the moon has allowed scientists to better understand the celestial body's origin. NASA says touching the sun will better illuminate the mysteries of our home star and how it influences its surroundings in space. Uh, but yeah, um, the Parker Solar Probe, a space probe NASA launched in 2018, has touched the sun and even sampled local particles and magnetic fields. All we can say is somewhere Icarus may be, must be proud on or green with envy. I don't know. I don't like that joke. <laughs> I find it funny that Eternals did an Icarus flying into the sun. Maybe he could have brought us samples. Spoilers for Eternals. It's out on Disney Plus now. You have no excuse not to watch it. Uh, but yeah, it's just, we've, we've managed to get a probe that's close enough to the sun that we can start taking very, very close, like, they're not going to fucking fly it into the sun, it's just close to the sun, it's just basically within the parameters that's safe, that they can kind of start getting feedback without basically destroying the robot. Uh, in more spacey news, uh, I don't know if people remember ages ago, the Chinese uh, U-2 uh, two rover uh, spotted a cube shape on, in one of the... Like, it took a photo and there was just a cube uh, that people were like, oh, this, this must be something really interesting. Oh my god, this is so amazing. What is this cube? Uh, it turns out it's a rock. It's just a rock. We, 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 it was just this... Uh, yeah, it's just a, it was just a rock. So that they just it was just this uh rock from a distance that based on the angle it looked like a a cube and it was just a big rock and now hey look we got a rock that's just funny i just find it funny that everyone was like oh my god it's a monolith it's some sort of structure on the moon now nah, it's just a rock it's just a big old rock that a rover saw and because it's slightly grainy footage you kind of just it uh it's just funny uh moving on to more tech stuff, uh, Apple's upcoming AR headset may limit users to just short bursts. Uh, bursts. Uh, so, despite it being 150 grams, which would be great for long-term use because it's quite light, uh, Apple has been openly working on what likely be an incredibly interesting, expensive VR headset for a while now. It is said to be a standalone, perhaps a bit like the very popular Oculus Quest 2. I think it's now the Meta Quest 2. And we found out back in March 2021 that it was going to be incredibly light. A light head, a lightweight headset is a key part of making a VR viable in its current form. If you can't wear the thing for a long enough time to play a game, there's not really much point. So this new tech got us... So it's basically, it's just like, hey, look, um, 
But according to WCCF Tech, despite the lightweight design, Apple is not is actually not trying to make the headset for long-term use. Dreams of escaping into a metal world in a lightweight headset under 150 grams uh, be dashed because Apple is actually aiming for basically the opposite. Apple is creating devices it hopes users will use in small, purposeful bursts rather than constant, mindless drifting. Apple CEO Tim Cook had previously told WCCF Tech that he had concerns over how the company's creations were being used for endless scrolling as opposed to creativity and other other endeavors. He's probably not wrong, <laughs> but I mean, you, dev- you created the device that does that, and you also device also inherently is designed for people to continuously use it. You can't say that you're not doing it for that purpose. Um, but yeah, it, it's this is a device... I think we covered it. It was meant to be around 1,000 to 3,000 USD um, in terms of cost. Uh, but yeah, it's... I, I, I've, I don't know. I do feel like playing um, VR for a long time isn't great. Um... But I also feel that if you're trying, if if it starts fucking flashing up warnings and st- or it purposefully locks itself so you can't do it, it's kind of annoying. I don't think Apple should be the one deciding how long you should be using it. I think you can have settings that you can enable, but I think you are the person who's buying it. You should be the one to decide how long you want to go into it. Uh, maybe if you're spending all your time, Apple will flash up a, hey, maybe you want to go outside thing like the uh, old Nintendo Wii thing where it's, hey, you've been playing for over this many hours. Maybe you want to go outside and look at some trees. Stuff like that. Uh, maybe it's just a suggestion, but I don't think they should... I don't know if it will be like a, right, you get two hours, you only get two hours. It's locked to two hours. You can only play for two hours. Because... It would be really annoying if you're trying to do that, or it won't let you log back in for the for the day. Because um, imagine if you have meet business meetings and stuff like that, and you're you can't do it because your fucking headset's locked because you've been playing uh, VR games for too long, and you can't get back into it, and you need to do it for work. Um, but yeah, uh, that that was just Apple thing. Now. <laughs> This one's a bit different, but it's just kind of... Uh, I think this was more science than... And I didn't put it in the right section, but... Uh, in the first US surgeon's transplant, a pig heart into a patient. So they've successfully managed to transplant a pig heart into a human. Um, so a dying Maryland handyman, 57, who's ineligible for a human organ, is doing well uh, three days after the risky last-ditch procedure. David Bennett, 57, is the first human to receive a pig heart as an organ transplant. Surgeons in Baltimore transplanted pig heart on Friday, and Bennett's doing well. But it is too soon to know how long-term effects of this would be. Um, but it, yeah, he he is basically ineligible to uh, get a human heart, I imagine, because it's just risky. Uh, terminal heart failure sufferer underwent not the nine-hour experimental procedure at the University of Maryland Medical Center in Baltimore on Saturday. Surgeons used a heart taken from a pig that had undergone gene editing to make it less likely that his body's immune system would de- reject the organ. Uh, experts say it's too soon to know if his body will fully accept the organ and the next few weeks will be critical as he's weaned off the machine. But if successful, it would mark a medical breakthrough that could save thousands of lives in the U.S. alone each year, also the world, um, Doctor, Co- uh, it's basically a. Wa- it's basically very um crazy that this is happening. Uh, apparently last year there were over three thousand eight hundred heart pl- heart transplants in the U.S., a record number according to the U.S. Network of Organ Sharing, which oversees the nation's transplant system. Uh, nearly twelve hundred. No, not twelve hundred. 120,000 Americans Americans are in need of a healthy organs. On average, 20 people die uh, die each day waiting for one to become an available. Uh, there is a huge shortage of human organ donations for transpl- donated for transplant in the U.S. and U.K., driving scientists to try and figure out how to use animal organs instead. Um, yeah, I don't understand people's um, hesitance to donate organs when they die. Um, I, I'm an organ donor. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to say people have to do it. I just don't see why people wouldn't, you're not using it. I know people have this, um, thing where it's your body and 
it's I think it's people don't want to give parts of themselves because then they don't think they're going to get into heaven or stuff like that. I'm not I'm not 100% versed in it. If people if people have valid like reasons as to why they don't want to do it, let me know in the comments. I am generally curious as to why people are against donating like blood or organs and stuff like that when they like for blood I I donate blood sometimes. Um and it's just like, well, if it can help someone, why not? I'm not it, and it's not, it doesn't like affect me. I know people like scared of needles and stuff like that and that's valid. Um but I'm just kind of like if you can give it and you're not using it, why not like give someone else a chance um because they do extensive like uh testing to find out if someone is eligible because it's like oh you can't smoke you can't drink you can't like you gotta basically have like no medical issue like you gotta have like you gotta promise like i i think you can't get them if you're like a smoker or an alcoholic because they just know that you won't treat the organs properly and you'll just be back in again um which is a shame but like i get it (laughs) Um, but yeah, it's fucking crazy that this is, um, a thing and hopefully this dude survives it, keeps it going and that they can slowly work medically around getting more people, um, organs and stuff. Cause then it would be more of a, when you like for, um, meat production and stuff like that, uh, you could then have, I guess not more of a reason, more of a justification, but more like a valid use of the pig heart or other animal hearts when you're killing the animal to get the, like, it would probably be like more of a procedure that you take the heart out, ship it off, they genetically modify it, and then you put it in a human and then they can live for a little bit longer. I don't know. It's all ethical questions that (laughs) I'm not going to be able to cover on this episode, but hey, we got a little fun thing at the end for uh, Razor which was something that came out of CES, which I missed last time. Well, I didn't miss it, but I forgot to put it in last time. So it's um, Project Sophia, which is uh, the world's first modular gaming desk concept. Uh, Switch out convention for innovation with the gaming battle station of the future. Decked out with vast array of hot swappable modules, unlock countless configuration options to create a setup customized to your needs. Powered by a high-performance integrated PCB, the possibilities for PC have never seemed this limited. Limitless. <laughs> limited. <laughs> with Project Sophia. Uh, basically, it's Razer's attempt to at, like putting customization into a desk. And so it's like uh, THX spatial surround sound controls, system monitoring, programmable hotkey modules, Thunderbolt Thunderbolt powered uh, EG, e, eGPU, RAID controller, network performance module, 15W wireless charger, uh, 15 watt. I don't know why I said W. Thunderbolt 4 hub media controls, and then you can. St- uh, integrate a t uh, a pc monitor onto it uh it's basically just a desk that has uh eg lit glass tabletop for enhanced immersion and customization uh also it's got rgb lights and a next gen oled display basically this is all a concept it's like a 65 uh to a 77 display uh that you can like clip on uh onto the desk itself and then it will just work but it's kind of like trying to design a a battle station control desk for your PC thing, which I don't know how it would work, depending on if it's like an actual PC built into it or it's still the uh, tower PC that you have and then you have your mouse and keyboard on top and you're trying to put it on top of all of these modules that would just get in the way. But it's kind of a cool design, kind of a cool concept. I don't think they'll ever make it, <laughs> but it's just it just gives you more options to balance your controls. You can see more things easily. It's kind of like those laptops with the extra screen on the uh, in- above the keyboard or like under the keyboard, where they just give you like the option to have controls that aren't being on the screen, the big screen. They're just kind of like here's all your stuff that you need. Um, but yeah, I just think it's kind of cool. It was just a fun little thing for the end of the show. Uh, I don't really have anything to recommend. Uh, and I don't really have anything I don't want to recommend. Um, so yeah, that's that's been the show. I know it's been a bit different. We don't have Dan here. Uh, hopefully he has a speedy recovery. He's boosted up and I think uh, v- double vaxxed plus booster. So he isn't as badly affected as he once was. Um, I still haven't ever had COVID. I still have my vac- two vaccines. I need to go get my booster at some point. 
uh, and other people should. Um, this isn't a political thing. I just think it helps stop spread it. <laughs> like I trust scientists. I'm not going to get in a debate with people about um, whether or not it's the right thing to do. I just think personally, I don't see why you wouldn't. I don't believe these conspiracies about the government trying to control you and track you. It's like if they wanted to track you, they're already tracking you because you have a mobile phone in your pocket. Uh, and the science behind a tracking device that small in the eye of a needle would just not work. <laughs> we are not that far advanced. Uh, maybe in a couple years, who knows? But at the moment, we are not that far advanced. Um, I didn't. I didn't mean for this to end on a COVID uh, vaccine tirade so uh yeah i'll leave you here hopefully you enjoyed this episode it went back to the old schools of the first four episodes that i did on my own um which were absolute hot garbage <laughs> um but yeah hopefully i haven't done a shit job as i did then hopefully i've had a little bit of character growth since then uh and i have yet yet again continued to ramble like i always do um we'll see you next week hopefully dan will be better um, if not, I might be doing this again. We'll see you then. Bye.